everybody. We are from Group A, Monday 10 a.m. class, and speaking today will be Hannah Moldrich, Keelan Smith, Afira Zukifli, and Zian Wong. We will be investigating the effects of hill slope shape and roughness on soil erosion. So, are you wondering what soil erosion is? Well, let me invite you into the world of soil erosion. Erosion is the process of dislodging soil particles, forming sediment which is transported throughout the landscape. This process is broken up into three stages, particle detachment, particle transport and eventual deposition. Particle movement has large effects on the topography and hydrology of the surrounding area. Erosion becomes an issue when the rate of bedrock weathering to sediments is not able to keep up with the erosion rate of those sediments. This leads to problems of soil de degradation and loss of nutrients, which can be detrimental to the landscape, especially in the nutrient impoverished West Australian soils. The force of rainfall causes rain slash and contributes to the processes of sheet, rill and gully erosion. Rain splash erosion occurs when rain droplets hit the ground with a force strong enough to mobilise the particles in the soil. This creates an impact crater caused by the volume and velocity of the rain droplet hitting the surface, breaking the soil particles to be deposited to the surrounding areas. This deposition becomes non-uniform when there is a slope, creating bias deposition down slope. Finer particles are affected more. Their lighter weight gives them the ability to move, to be moved more so than larger, heavier particles as it takes less force to dislodge them. On a larger scale, there is sheet, rill and gully erosion. At the top of the slope, where runoff has just begun, water hasn't yet concentrated into smaller areas. The water is ponded on the surface and runs down in a uniform manner, like a sheet. Thus, erosion is uniform across the hill slope. As erosion continues, the water concentrates at the lower areas of the landscape. Real erosion occurs where the increased um, runoff removes soil running through little streamlets, while other areas experience little to no erosion. These rills can form gullies over time, essentially a larger, deeper version where large amounts of water and soil particles move through. In some cases, this can form the beginnings of a river system. The rate of erosion is affected by the rainfall intensity, the roughness of the landscape, the slope, the length of the slope and the nature of the soil. A higher rainfall intensity increases runoff and erosion as well as the longer duration of the actual rain event. The larger the density of the rocks and vegetation on the surface decreases runoff and erosion. A landscape can become rougher over time due to the process of armouring, where the finer particles are detached first, leaving larger rocks and sediments behind, which are more resistant to flow. The rock fragments affect runoff differently to a normal soil layer, as they increase infiltration and ponding and reduce runoff. Over time, we see steeper slopes having higher rock content due to greater erosion over time compared to lower slopes. Vegetation also acts as an armour due to the foliage and mounds it creates. This increases infiltration and decreases runoff. The longer the slope length, the higher the potential for runoff and erosion. The higher surface area creates a greater buildup of velocity and intensity down the slope. A greater steepness on a slope also increases the velocity at which the runoff flows over the landscape. More energy is created to dislodge particles, thus greater erosion. Lastly, the nature of the soil, loose versus compact, varies erosion rates. Loose soils will cause water to pool, thus more infiltration of the runoff, whereas compact soils have the opposite effect. 
Heavy rock content decreases the velocity of runoff over a hill slope, decreasing the erosion potential. Also in heavy rock soils, there is less finer particles to be displaced, and so erosion of the larger particles, which are more resistant to flow, are harder to displace, as they require a higher energy content in the flow velocity to be moved. With the rougher surface, the transport capacity of the flow is decreased and pools are created in the rocky surface that increase infiltration into the soil and therefore less is eroded away from the system. In larger rainfall events, the rain will create or find preferred pathways for runoff through the heavy rocks and this pathway will be eroded and scoured heavily while the wet rest remains low in runoff and erosion. Low rock content instead creates a more even erosion profile with less infiltration. Convex and concave topographic landforms all affect the erosion rate and flow pathways of a hill slope in different ways. Convex topography is described as a mound in the hill slope, therefore creating a low slope at the top of the profile, which, is over, which over the length of the profile increases in steepness to the bottom of the profile, which experiences the higher slope. The runoff of a land, on a landscape like this will be slow and steady at the beginning and speed up over time as it goes over the mound. The top of the landscape would most likely experience sheet erosion and as the runoff extends over the mound there will be more occurrences of rill and gully formations. Concave topography is the opposite. The land curves inwards with a steep slope at the start of the profile and an exponential drop to a low slope at the end of the profile. This forms a sink which collects any runoff and erosional particles that the profile in a pool at the bottom. There is little infiltration on the steep slopes at the beginning of the profile, but large infiltration rates in the sink at the bottom. The steeper beginning would have a higher flow velocity and therefore a higher rate of erosion to begin with compared to the convex topography, and the area is likely to experience real and gully erosion from the beginning. In each topographic profile, the rainfall intensity, the steepness and length and the roughness of the surface would affect how runoff flows across the profile and how much is detached and deposited in each specific case. So given all this information, we decided to experiment, experimentally investigate the effects of hill slope shape and also surface roughness on soil hydrology and the rates of erosion. Our objectives were just to have a grasp on measuring erosion rates in a quantitative manner and to research and further understand the effects of surface roughness and hill slope shape just on that quantitative measure, um, to perform a statistical analysis, so using a t-test to determine if the replicates were actually significantly different from each other or just, you know, you know the same duplicates. All right, so the hypothesis hypothesis, our, our first hypothesis was that in comparison to convex hill slopes, concave hill slopes will have a decreased rate of erosion. So yep, that's for hill slope shape. Our second one was just for surface roughness and it was just with increased surface roughness there will be decreased rates of erosion due to lower water velocities and eventual soil armoring. So both these hypotheses were tested in slightly differing experimental setups. Yep, so to test the um, hill slope shape, we use a desktop catchment with a soil tray and use sprinklers as a rainfall simulator. And when runoff began, the ensuing water and sediment was collected in aluminium trays at the bottom of the soil tray um, for a period of two minutes every five minutes. Um, to test the effect of surface roughness, we used a different experimental setup with larger soil trays, as you can see on the left, um, and a kind of more sophisticated looking rainfall simulator as well. So instead of a constant rate of rainfall that was used in the desktop catchment, this rainfall simulator sprinkled water on the soil trays periodically around every 10 seconds. Now we tested the soils with 5% rock cover, as seen in the picture on the right, as well as soils with 40% rock cover, which is not pictured here. When runoff began, the runoff was collected in plastic containers from the bottom of the soil tray for a period of 30 seconds every three minutes. All the runoff that was collected was weighed and dried to determine the amount of water and sediment in the runoff. Based on this data, the water velocities in meters per second and erosion rates in grams per centimeters squared 
per minute at each collection time were calculated. So each simulation for each experiment was conducted in triplicate. However, not all of the data for each replicate are available for a variety of reasons that we'll mention later in this presentation. We also conducted t-tests on the replicate data that we did have in order to ensure that there was no significant difference between any of them. So if the t-test returned a value of p, a p-value below 0 0.5, then the replicates could be said to be significantly different from each other. And a p-value below 0 0.05 indicates that the experiment was not adequately reproducible as the data obtained were not true replicates of each other. So investigating the effects of rock cover on erosion rates, um, here are our results for, yeah, just the whole simulation. Firstly, um, we're looking at the t-test results and on the 5% rock cover, um, you'll notice that replicates 2 and 3 and th 1 and 3 are sig significantly different from each other. And this suggests that re replicate 3 is um, significantly different from the other two replicates. So for the other um, simulation with more rock cover, 40%, um, both results are true replicates of each other, as there is no significant difference between the two. Um, and with these graphs, we're just showing you guys erosion rates on the y-axis and time. So the first thing to note is that the simulation with less rock cover has a much higher erosion rate initially, um, and overall actually, um, which supports our hypothesis. You can see that in the axes, where the maximum for less rock cover on the left is 0 0.007, and the maximum for the rock cover on the right graph, so 40% rock cover, is 0 0.0004. With less rock cover, you can see on the left there's a large spike in, in erosion rates at the beginning of the simulation. Um, and that's because um, there are more easily detached particles being washed away, and as the water velocity increases over time. So all of that gets washed away and eventually um, rock armoring occurs. Therefore, that plateau sort of happens as you can see in the orange and red, orange and yellow, I mean, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, in comparison with the more rock cover, you can see on the left here that the erosion rates remain fairly stable with in the orange line, only increasing slightly over time. Um, the yellow line has a large spike around 40 minutes, but this point is quite an outlier given that 20 minutes prior it had zero erosion. Okay, so we also explored the erosion rates versus the discharge rate, and it, as you can see, they correlate against each other, especially in the left graphs with the 5% rock cover. Um, so uh, with the 40% rock cover on the right, there's less discharge noted on the right axes, <laughs> and that's actually due to just the water velocity um, with the friction slowing down with increased rock cover. All right. Cool. So now we're looking at the effect of hill slope shape on erosion rates, uh, and here are our t test results. So you can see that the replicates for the convex slope were not significantly different from each other, which is good. However, we can see from the data in the concave slopes that replicate one is significantly different from the other two replicates. So onto the graph. Firstly, I'd like to note that the, data's, the data were quite inconclusive due to the differences in times that the samples were collected and also the differences in the number of samples there are for each simulation. So you can see for the convex slope um, data, we have more data points than the concave slope. And for the convex one, we start off at different times, unlike the concave one, which starts all at roughly 15 minutes. In spite of this, we can see that from the axis of both graphs that the convex slopes generally produce greater rates of erosion than concave slopes, thus supporting our hypothesis. If we look at the results for the concave slope on the left, we can see that the data in yellow is highly anomalous as the erosion rate increases quite steeply. However, in general, we can say that over time, the rate of erosion increases in convex slopes. In comparison, if we look at the concave slopes on the right, the erosion rates stay very stable and constant around the lower values. And here we can see how replicate 1 in yellow is significantly different from the other replicates as it's stable around a much lower value. And here is looking at the erosion rates versus the discharge rates again. So again, it's correlated because the, the higher the water velocity, the more uh, soil particles that get displaced and washed away in runoff. <clears throat> 
So there's a few ways in which our experiment could have been improved. So firstly, um, a standardized methodology is required for the collection and analysis of samples. This was seen, well, this was required particularly for the last experiment where there were um, different time periods over uh, which the samples were collected. Um, it was just not good to not have a standardized methodology because then we're not really sure whether our the results that we got are actually due to changes in hill slope or in fact due to the changes in experimental methodology. Secondly, it's really important to ensure that the controlled variables are maintained throughout the simulations. So for the experiment on rock cover, we actually noted that the um, simulation with less rock cover had a greater rainfall intensity than the simulation with more rock cover, which clearly um, then we won't really know whether or not the runoff rates that, that we're recording are due to the rock cover or if it's due to differences in rainfall intensity. And finally, it's really important to assess the precision of our equi equipment prior to running the experiments because the um, error in rainfall intensity was probably due to the sprinklers being a bit dodgy. Mm, so conclusions for the surface roughness experiment. So it was with higher rock cover surface, erosion rates were noticeably lower and that's due to just um, the effects of rocks on the soil hydrology. And yeah, it increases friction and slows down water velocity. So greater por proportion of large slope particles cannot be mobilized by a runoff as well. So yeah, with higher rocks, rock cover, um, yeah, just less erosion will occur. And the conclusions for the hill slope shape, um, again, the data is quite, in the data was, were, the data were quite inconclusive due to experimental limitations. However, in general, concave slopes were expected to have lower erosion rates, and that's because um, the steepest slope in concave hill slopes occurs at the top, and the sediment accumulates at the bottom of the concave hill slopes. Whereas in convex hill slopes, maximum runoff occurs at the bottom, so more runoff, um, I guess, leaves this landscape. Thank you so much for listening to our presentation today. We hope you thoroughly enjoyed it. We sure did. And we'll be listening to your reports later. Ciao.